Blessed Sunday morning, church, to each and every one of you. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer. How are you all today in this MCO period? Are you enjoying yourself? I am with my family and we are eating so many kinds of dishes never before. I am very, very happy. I have put on weight. And now I want to share the word of God to you. In this time of this pandemic, what's the message? I was thinking about the message and it came to me. And this is what I'm going to share with you. Now let me ask you, what is this pandemic COVID-19 speaking to you, speaking to us? Is this pandemic is a signal speaking to us? Does this have a signal to the family, to the individual, to the church, to the world at large? You know what? I believe it is. And I call this, this pandemic as a wake-up call by God. When we study the Bible, God loves the people very much. God loves his people so much. I'm talking about the Israelites people at that time. The people, you know, when they were obedient to God, God gave them peace, God gave them victory, and they all prospered. When they start to disobey Him and fall away from His presence and worshipping other gods instead and getting indulging in all other atrocities, uh, pleasures on sexual lust and impurities of sexual sins. You know what God did? Before he, the wrath of God came to them, God is so good. You know why? God gave them warnings first. He gave them warning through the prophets. And after the warning given by the prophets, they still did not come back to him and still they want the, 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 the ways that they are doing. is so uh, entertaining for them. God lost his temper and he punished them. And when he punished them, and gave them hardships and tribulations. Some tribulations he gave them. You know what? These people, after some time, they repented and asked for forgiveness. And you know we have a good God, great God, compassionate God, full of grace, full of love. He embraces them back. And then God gives them peace. God gives them joy. God gave them victories. And they prospered them as a nation. That is the God whom we seek and serve. Same God whom they seek, the same God is with us. Now, likewise, God loved this world. He created. He gave His only begotten Son to save this fallen world. God is speaking through this pandemic virus, hitting not only one country, but all the nations of the world at the same time. What a pandemic it is. And I call it the wake up call by God. That's my message. It's a wake up call by God. These tribulations, I call it a pandemic COVID-19 is one kind of tribulation. Okay. Why? Because as we as the nations of the world, we have sinned against Him many, many, many and countless times and fallen short of His glory also many times. Through this pandemic, God is saying to the nations, you know what He's saying? He's saying, don't think you are very powerful and mighty. Humble yourself before me, says the Lord. Then God is saying to the individual people, like you and me, He says, through this pandemic, turn your wicked ways. Turn the pleasures of the world. 
Don't get involved with the lusts of the world. Come back to me, says the Lord. Then he's saying to the churches, he's saying, preach the truth, nothing but the truth. Don't sugarcoat my messages and leading the people astray from my words. God is saying to them, and, let, and if you do that, you are straying the people for your own purpose and your personal glory. Then he is saying to the families, he is saying, be united and get your household right in order before me. Sister. So what Jesus said in Matthew 24, which I want to share with you, this particular uh, chapter, verse 24, which I will read to you, Matthew 24, verse 6, he says, the Bible says, he says in the second uh, part of the verse, he says, see that you are not troubled for all these things. What is all these things? He's talking about tribulations. He's talking about tribulations, nature, like the pestilence, diseases, the viruses, the calamities, the crisis. He's talking about that. He's talking about all these things must come to pass. Then he says, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. Tribulation comes before the end of the world. Okay. Then he's continued to say in verse uh, 8. In this verse 8, he says, this is Jesus talking, you know. Jesus is saying, all this He's talking about tribulations. All these are the beginning of birth pains. In some translations, it says the beginning of sorrow. Then if you continue down to verse 13, look at the solution. He gives the answer to, to all this tribulation. He says in verse 13, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. What an encouraging word that Jesus has said during these times, during the tribulation times, whatever the people may go through. But if you are right with God, that's what he's saying in verse uh, 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Wonderful encouragement of God. When I read this verse, it encourages me. I don't have to fear of any pandemic or epidemic that is coming or going to come or it is, it is now or in future. Uh, we will not worry and I will definitely not worry because he has given me a solution to it and I'm going to cling to it. See what Jesus said and we must be able to follow what he says. Now, then I want to just share with you that some events that took place, some tribulation that took place early in the history of the world, just for your knowledge and just for your understanding. These events that took place in the 14th century, that is called the Black Plague Pestilence, that wiped, wiped out 30 to 60 percent of Europe population, that is amounting to 200 million people lost their lives. That is one of the pandemic of that nature. And there was, and I call it a wake up call by God to Europe. Then it also happened another one in 1918, in the year 1918. Have you heard of the Spanish flu? According to the report, it says 500 million people worldwide just like this virus worldwide and killed 20 to 50 million people. God was speaking to the nations of the world during that time, during the time of this tribulation and is still speaking today in this pandemic time of COVID-19. He is speaking. That's why I say and I title this message as a wake-up call by God. 
So you've got to be very sensitive if these things are happening because the Bible says all these things must come to pass. So we must be already ready. We should not be saying we are planning to get ready. We are going to get ready. We believers must be already ready. I believe God is speaking through this pandemic tribulation to you, to me, to the entire world. Take heed. Listen to what he says in 2 Chronicles, which I am going to read it to you. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. He's telling to you and to the entire world. He says in Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear their prayers from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is what God is saying during this time. Are we sensitive to His word? Are we going to imply His word and are we going to mend our ways back to Him? I leave it to you. I leave it to individually, corporately, to every one of the people in the world. Now note this fact. God is our prom promise-keeping God. The question is, are we keeping His promises and applying it into our daily life? That's the question I'm putting to the floor. You know what Jesus did for us, for the entire world? You know what He did? He took the weight of the world upon His shoulders to the cross. Do you know why? Because He loves the people of this world and He wants them to turn back to Him. Such a loving God, isn't it? Remember this. And this is the wake-up call again because every time you study the Word of God and something happens, the events are happening in this world, okay, remember, it's God is speaking through this tribulation, whether it's pestilence or diseases or viruses. Remember this. Remember this. In conclusion, if we are right with God, He says He will take us through the tribulations and He will save us through the tribulations. That's why He says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, if you, if you stand to the end, if you can endure to the end, He will save you through. The Bible says, Matthew 24, 13. Okay? And then I want to give you some biblical examples of this nature which I just explained. Now let me tell you, God never saved Noah from the storm. Are you surprised to hear this? God never saved Noah from the storm. God saved Noah through the storm. God did not save Job from his trials. God saved Job through his trials. God saved the three Hebrew boys, do you remember, during Daniel's time? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God saved through their fiery furnace. Likewise, God saved Daniel through the lion's den. And God saved Joseph through the trials. Biblical examples which I'm giving to you. He will save us through the tribulation. So do not worry about that. Just cling on to Him. Embrace Him. Hold Him tight. Never let Him go. God will save you through the tribulations now and in times to come. So be faithful. Be strong in your faith. Be of good courage and be of good cheer. He will carry you through. 
Remember, he carried the whole world upon his shoulders to the cross because he loves us so deeply. Can I hear an amen from you guys? And I say thank you. If you ever said it, I say thank you very much. But in conclusion, I like to share the five pointers which I have gathered by the, the, the studies that I have made, which I want to share with you. The first point I want to share with you, do not be unbelief believer. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do not be an unbelief believer. When unbelief comes to you, God says you will receive nothing from him. That is according to his word. Pointer number two, is God first in your life? Is he first in everything in your life? Then you got to make him first in everything in your life. Pointer number three, have you made room for God or do you call him on Sundays only? Pointer number four, if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, then give him the throne to your heart. Lastly, number five, walk by faith and not by sight. Because when you walk by faith, your end will be glorious end. Thank you, brothers and sisters. That's my message today. And I believe that this message has benefited you in some way. And if it has benefited you in some way, and I thank you because as you walk by faith and not by sight, and you will be a doer of the living words of God. And I want to say, I want to thank the Holy Spirit for giving me this message. And I want to thank the Holy Spirit as I speak the message that He which I am sharing with you. Let this word be a light unto your feet and a light unto your path that you will be able to ponder over it, meditate on it, act upon it and live a life of godly lifestyle. And I said, my dear brothers and sisters, thank you. That's the end of my message. God bless you and keep you and let his face shine upon you every day. God bless you.